Swift UI relies very heavily on a language power feature called opaque return types. And you can see them in action every time you return some view from a body like this one here. We're saying we'll send back one object that conforms to the view protocol, but we don't want to say what type it is. Now, returning some view means even though we don't want to know what view is being sent back, the Swift compiler does and can find out for sure. That might sound small, but it has some serious implications. First up, returning some view like this is important for performance. Swift UI has to be able to look at our entire set of views, our whole layout, to understand how they change over time, so we can update the UI correctly when needed. Now, if Swift UI didn't have this extra information, it'd be really slow for it to figure out exactly what changed for, say, a Boolean being toggled between true and false. It might have to ditch the entire view hierarchy and recreate it after every small change. The second reason it's important is because SwiftUI builds up modified content bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, previously I showed you code like this, uh, a button with hello world inside. Then we had an action here saying print type of self.body and modifier frame width 200, height 200 and background of dot red and it's a simple square button with a red background, right? And when it's pressed, it prints out the exact type of our body, which we just see as some view, some kind of views going back. But when you press the button, you'll see what Swift thinks it is. There you go. It thinks a modified content, modified content, button text, underscore frame layout, underscore background style modifier, color. So there's a lot happening here. And what you're seeing is that the, the view protocol has an associated type attached to it, which is Swift's way of saying that view by itself doesn't have meaning, it doesn't mean anything. We've got to say exactly what kind of view it is. It effectively has a hole in it in the same way that we can't say this is an array. We've got to say it's an array of strings. And so it's not allowed to say var body returns something from the view protocol. That's not allowed. We can, if you want to, in some situations, be very specific. We could say it returns a text view, if it literally does return a text view, like hello world. That's fine. But returning view does not make sense. That doesn't work. It will refuse because Swift wants to know what's inside the view. It's got a big hole that must be filled. Returning text, that's fine. We filled the hole, it understands what the view is, it's a text view. Now, over here in our previous code, uh, if we want to return one of these from our view, this uh, modify content, modify button, button text, frame layout, da, 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 da. what would we actually write? I mean, we could try and send back, you know, modified content, modified content, a mile long, the exact combination of modified content, modifiers, yada, 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 to use. But it's hideously painful. That's the return type for a very simple set of views. And the simple truth is, we just don't care. It's all internal Swift UI stuff. Some kind of view is going to go back. It's going to have that kind of type internally. So SwiftUI knows exactly what it is in inside for making changes, but we don't care. Just some kind of views going to go back. And so what some view lets us do is say, this will be a view, like a button or a text or a modified content, modified content down the line, but I don't want to say what. And so the hole that view has will be filled by a real view object, but we aren't required to write out that massive modified content list. Now, there are two places where this gets more complex. First, how does VStack work? Like VStack conforms the view protocol. Great, it's some kind of view, but how does it fill the what kind of content hole? Because it can have anything inside it, some text, some buttons, something else. Secondly, what happens if we send back 
two views directly from our body property with no stack wrapped around them. Now to answer the first question, if we had in here uh, a vStack with text hello and then text world, how does it send back that? What is that internally? It's complex. Now it turns out when you do this, SwiftUI silently creates a new kind of view for us called a tuple view. Now you know tuples, they hold a specific number of values with specific types. A tuple view is exactly that. It holds exactly two views inside it. Happen to be text views here. And so the, the vStack fills its question, this whole of what kind of view do I hold with the answer, it's a tuple view containing two views inside it. But what if we had more? What if we had text goodbye and then text world? Well, now what do we have? Well, now we've got a tuple view containing four views or five or six or seven, eight, nine, ten views. There's literally a tuple view version for all these variants up to 10 views. If you press Command Shift O, it's a brilliant open quickly tool in Xcode. You can type in tuple view and press enter and it'll take you to the SwiftUI generated interface, like what SwiftUI is doing behind the scenes. And it'll tell you there are stacks and stacks tuple views. And if you just look through here for the variants, you'll see one here that holds two views, one that holds three, one that holds four, one that holds up to five, there's six here, there's seven, eight, there's nine here, and there's 10 here. That's view C0 through to C9. And that is why SwiftUI has a 10 view limit right now. Because tuple view has variants to hold everything from two views up to 10 views. There is no tuple view for an 11th view or a 12th view or more. Because tuple view is how it handles these multiple views in one place. It wraps them silently in tuple views for us to handle one, or sorry, two through 10 views. So there's no 11th view option, so we can't have 11 views as a direct child of another view. You can with four each, that doesn't use tuple view. But when you do it by hand, it uses tuple view. And so you have a limit of how many views you have. Now, the second question I said was, what happens if we send back multiple views? Like this kind of thing. What happens here? How is it that works? How is it that code even runs? You know, we, if we said there were, there was a vStack, you know, here we have before, like this, with our views inside, fine. It'll make these texts into a four item tuple view and put that inside the vStack. And the vStack gets sent back. One kind of view is sent back. So the vStack answers question saying, I got a hole and my holes filled by a tuple view of four text views. But then what? When we remove the vStack, what happens now? How do we send that back? What's happening here is that SwiftUI is actually attaching a attribute here to our body property for us silently, automatically called at view builder. And it does the same thing the vStack was doing. It wraps these four views inside a tuple view, a four item tuple view. So even though it looks like we're sending back four independent things, we can't do that. Some view says one thing must go back. And so that one thing that goes back is a tuple view containing four text views. This behavior is not magic. It is there in the SwiftUI interface to look at if you want to. If you right click on view and choose jump to definition, it'll show you again where we were a second ago, the generated interface for SwiftUI. And this is it here, so this is view, we've got to have some code, and down here is our body, and bang, there is the view builder attribute. It's being attached for us. 
So it converts silently in the same way VStack does those four text views into one tuple view containing four text views. And so it looks like we're sending back four things, we actually send back one thing. Now, of course, how SwiftUI interprets four things going back is not specifically defined anywhere. Will it be a VStack, a HStack, a ZStack, four different screens, who knows what? But as you'll see later on, that's actually quite helpful.